now that we've clarified the different roles and why you would want to want to watch a game uh, differently to to a fan you've also got um, if you're a coach now the difference with with a coach to maybe scouting or or the analysis department is you might need to make decisions on on the spot so they need to be they need to be quicker um, again this sounds a lot easier than it than it actually is um, once once you're kind of in the dugout trying to do it so often if you are coaching on the sideline you're going to be at sort of eye level with the players are sometimes lower which which can make make things tricky um, where the analysis department they're often high up in in the stands they get a they get a really good view of the of the fields um, and then scouts scouts again are normally sort of halfway up in the in the stadium or um, they can they can find their own their own vantage point okay so let's say um, watching a game opposition uh, say so you've been set with the task of, of watching the opposition and you need to be able to break them down, strengths, weaknesses, what they do at corners, um, any little patterns and things that could be brought down and put into a, a tactical coaching session for, for either yourself or, or the manager. So typically the way the way I do it, say you've got um say you've got the game on your on your TV or laptop you're going to want to spend the first two to four minutes of just watching the game so you need your eyes to kind of climatize to, to, to the pace of the game um, and get any distractions out so what what tends to happen is um, you need to figure out who's who so your eyes can adjust who's wearing what color um, you need to familiarize yourself with with the starting lineup and the one of the mistakes one of the typical most common mistakes that i see with this is people will will tend to try and analyze the game too too quickly so my recommendation is sit back it takes me two to four minutes to to kind of my eyes to adjust and get and get used to it um, but again if you're if you've got the luxury of time um, i.e. you're doing this in your own time I, don't be worried to sort of allow yourself up to up to 10 minutes to just watch the game um, and again there's a few different factors that you need to need to be looking at for this so you've got you've got the weather which again could be quite tricky when you're watching it on tv um, the rain the wind then then the pitch what does the what's the pitch like um, and then who's home and away so what I what I would typically do with this before I start I would make a little template on a, on a piece of paper and you'll have defense attack attacking transition and defensive transition and I would kind of have them for four boxes and it again it just has to be just scribbled down on a piece of paper makes it easy um, I would also then write out each formation. Now, what you need to be careful of with the formations is if you go on um, if you go on some football website or a newspaper website, um, or even sometimes if you've depending on where you've got the game from, they'll normally have the the lineup and the formation lined up. What you need to be careful of there is the person who's done the lineup might not be uh, might not be a coach or anything so they'll they'll sometimes put them into a rough formation which isn't actually the formation that's being played so my so my recommendation with this would be you want to get your lineup and then you then yourself you can have a look at what they've put out as a formation which will give you a kind of a rough guide where the defenders midfielders attackers are but you need to be you need to be writing that um, as as you see it. Um, the other thing with writing out the formation, don't be afraid to write it out as is. So what I mean by that is 
say they've got a flat back four, write it as a flat back four. And then if they've got um, a holding midfielder that is sat within five yards of the two centre backs, so you've got two centre backs there and they're sat in there, don't be afraid to put that in rather than thinking that they need to be higher up on the so attention to detail on the formation is, is going to be massive um, so once you've got that you've got your lineup you've got your formation and then you're going to want to have your four boxes and again it's defense defensive transition attack attack and transition um, just to break that down defense is and we're only looking at one team here i'll do another video where we look at two teams but We've got one, so we're looking at one team. So the box with the defence is when, so the box we're defending is when your team is defending against the opposition. Attacking is when your team has possession of the ball and is attacking the opponent. Um, defensive transition is when your, when your team has been attacking and just loses possession. So now they're defending. And it's that moment in between. Um, and then attacking transition is when your team was defended and they've just won the ball back and then now we're about to attack. So just to clarify them points, you might already know that, but hey, oh, at, least, at least we're safe now. What I would do is I would have two, two separate pages with that. So if you've, got, um, if you've got a folder or you've got a book, it's gonna be like that. Your formation's gonna be on one side and your notes are going to be are going to be on the other side. Um, also, before you start, and I've seen this mistake made a lot of times. Um, people are, are eager to to kind of get the notes down and end up missing the game. The luxury of watching watching it on TV is um, unless it's unless it's live. But even then, you can still kind of stop and restart and go back. Um, certainly nowadays.